Hi. Good morning. We are happy you chose to help us tackle the zeitgeist of the Enlightenment in our audiobook entitled Hashtag Echoes of the Enlightenment, Baroque Literature. We begin our collection of notes on figures of this period we feel most pertinent beginning with Francis Bacon. Come along. Preface. The question is not whether the capacity of the human mind to understand concepts only seen in the mind is innate. We know infants would understand trigonometry if they were more fluent with the English language. Introduced later in life, more mature, those once infants have the vocabulary necessary to champion the study whereas before they hadn't. Methodologically, we begin with formulas plugging and chugging numbers, but the more we do so is the more familiar we are with triangles and polygons all the same. We didn't always know 12 eggs were in a dozen. Enlightened, we may teach others through our best understanding, but without it we would still just be students of reason. The Dark Ages in Western Europe experienced before the Renaissance after the fall of the Roman Empire was one absent of in trigonometry's case the Pythagorean theorem but in Europe's case empiricism. As kingdoms don't have colonies but empires do, colonialism brought a rise to servitude where from the prophet we get the term Baroque. Surely, we've seen this style of architecture, music, painting, and certainly in clothing design, but it is also in culinary art more visual though hardly distasteful. Marie's offer to starving Frenchmen asking for bread was said to be given with ill intent, but like flowers blooming are appreciated for beauty, cake is the blossom of the culinary profession. One of the many products of the Renaissance was an enlightenment of common men through Baroque literature. The age of enlightenment is what's in question here and the rise of literary works of this period where authors as visually stimulating as flowers or cake enlightened readers comparably so with reason. Explaining complex concepts through those simpler in common language afforded authors attempted to translate on what they had been enlightenment. Unfortunately, as we are human they did so imperfectly, but many think rather well. The brilliance of light is so beautiful, and we see it, when understanding too. Baroque literature is as stimulating, not to our eyes that we see, but to our mind with which we think. Both our sight. Introduction. How would we see enlightenment in well-lit areas or eat bacon when we are already full? Freedom of speech is a relatively new phrase that was unheard of in days gone by. The age of enlightenment was more than just an intellectual stint in time often forgotten but also the fruit of the scientific and industrial revolutions in Europe. From the fall of the Western Roman Empire until the Renaissance, we have to remember that more people couldn't read than could. Sure, letters may be fun and clever if known but people were more concerned with characters in their lives than smaller ones scribbled on parchment. A book was like getting every channel broadcast on one television in the house while the bulk of the Western world may have flipped from this to that and elsewhere afterward only watched three or four stations. Really, probably first the letters of their family then personal and middle names but the Dark Ages were described so from a lack of intellectual enlightenment. Whether under the auspices of the Catholic Church or subject to the jurisdiction of one's king few thought enough to question either the written word of the church or state. But the Industrial Revolution was the printing press where sure, the Holy Bible was printed first and perhaps laws next but freedom of speech was not so in kingdoms of the Western world. Technically, Baroque literature is an oxymoron because literature itself and artistic may be Baroque. Francis Bacon introduced artistic written communication to the Western world through the promotion and some say actually having written what we do to William Shakespeare thanks to Goldsmith Johannes Gutenberg. Out of darkness of English royal ascension on earth as Queen Elizabeth I subsided with no heir, King James VI of Scotland was the son of Mary Queen of Scots and Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley as a great-great-grandson of Henry VII, James Charles Stuart, 1561-1626, became James I of England March 24, 1603. We say that to say there is but one thing worse than government which is a lack of government and those who followed the late Queen Elizabeth I and Anglicanism demanded a monarch as biologically close to Henry VIII and the then recently transitioned Queen. Why? Well, to decipher the scrolls as Anglican pre-Christian era theology begins with author just as Scandinavians are more of a Norse mythological ethnicity. Of his cabinet was his Attorney General and Lord Chancellor Francis Bacon. As a philosopher and statesman this English noble was a patron of libraries dividing books into three categories, history, poetry, and philosophy where through him literature was differentiated from theology and law. As first Viscount St. Alvin and Lord Verulam his division of literature into history, poetry, and philosophy paved the way for information other than holy writ and that of legal parameters. The categories put law and religion under history, while those of poetry and philosophy were left for men and women like you and us to describe the world for ourselves. The movement has yet to subside and we have yet been subdued. When all else fails we will just refer to Malik and call it a day, but many think we should go further, so we will in this track dedicated to figures of the Age of Enlightenment. Francis Bacon may have been an English noble, but he couldn't evade being called more French. That being so, we can't say that like their mastery of the culinary arts they saw literature likewise, but they may well have. Bacon's literary legacy has lasted at least until today as his promotion of William Shakespeare led at least some to think he wrote some or was the author of all. With educated from Trinity College at Cambridge which was mostly in Latin and the Queen needing to decipher the scrolls she reserved the attorney for her legal advisor. Following English literature morals took a second hand to ethics as the printing press became more readily available to the masses and philosophical thought could be housed in a container. 
Francis Bacon in his patronage of libraries and dividing written communication into three categories opened a door to philosophical literature where previously there was none. King James thought as the crown had but people like you all and us filled Bacon's libraries. We owe him today. Thank you for your time and consideration.